friends, it is me, Alana. Welcome back to my channel, The Awkward Book Nerd. For this video, I'm going to be showing you my top picks of 2019. So I have 10 books here that um, I will be just talking about and they are basically my favorite books of 2019. <laughs> um, I also have one honorable mention that I loved but it just didn't make the top 10 unfortunately but I still loved it so I wanted to throw that in there as well. And yeah, so I'm going to get started. These are in no particular order just because they're like my children. Like I can't just be like, this one's my top favorite. But like, so I decided to give you just 10 that I absolutely loved this year and that some of them even surprised me this year. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in and talk about these books. So the first book I have for you that I absolutely adored this year was Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schultz. I was not expecting to love this as much as I did. This one was a really big surprise for me this year. It is essentially about a girl who lives in this kingdom and she basically has to uh, stop this plot against the four queens that rule her kingdom. And I loved the like story and I loved that it took place in multiple POVs so like you got the Queen's perspectives and like main, the main girl's perspective as well So that was like really fun just to be able to see what was going on in all aspects of this story But I'm definitely excited to see what else Ash Schultz writes as well Um, so this was definitely one of my favorites and I'm super glad that I was able to read it The next one I have is We Were Beautiful by Heather Hepler. This is I feel like it's like a low-key like book like I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it but it was definitely one of my faves of the year it's about a girl who something happens to her and her sister one night and due to that she struggles with uh, PTSD and just some other things but she also has a um, physical deformity due to the thing that happened that night and so she ends up um, going to stay with her grandmother that she's never really known in New York and while she's there she kind of meets a group of kids who understand what it means to be scarred um, on the inside but also on the outside just by life and um, circumstances that were out of their control and so I really enjoyed the story just because I talked a lot about grief and about um, like healing and mental health and I just really loved the bonds that were formed in this. I also loved that they talked a lot about art and yeah so I just really love this one. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for like a really just touching contemporary. The next book I have is Slay by Brittany Morris. I loved this so much. I recommend this now whenever I'm at my store to people. I recommended this this to uh, a dad over Christmas who was looking for a book for his 16 year old daughter and so I was like how about Slay by Brittany Morris? And he took it. I loved that it focused on the fact that she was a smart girl who just wanted to enjoy her game and just wanted to create a space where black people can just be black people without having to explain themselves, without having to live up to a certain stipulation or stereotype or whatever. Um, it was just a place where you could be yourself and embrace your own blackness in whatever form or way that means to you. Um, I definitely loved how this spoke about how there's definitely not one true way to be black, if that makes sense. Like, there's just so many different forms and beauty to blackness. There's so many different skin types and personalities and there's just no one way to be black and that's okay and that's something that should be celebrated because it means there's just so much beauty under that umbrella. Alright the next thing I have is Red White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I was not expecting to love this as much as I did uh, especially because I, I like uh, adult contemporary romance. Um, I'm just kind of, I'm also very picky though in general just on the books that I read. I tend to stick to the books that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like and I I knew I would probably like this but I wasn't sure just because of all the hype and like sometimes hyped books make me a little nervous because sometimes I can like them and sometimes I don't so whatever but this definitely fell into the like category it fell into the love category um I know a lot of people there it's like very polarized where people liked it or they didn't like it or they just thought it was okay um I personally liked it because of the relationships I loved how genuine they were between like the friendships and between Henry and Alex I just I loved that aspect of the story and yeah it was cheesy at some points but I loved just how humorous it was but also how relatable it was in a way too 
despite the fact that one's a prince and one's the son of the president of the United States, you could still relate to the aspects of their personalities where like Alex just wanted someone to like love and accept him and same with Henry and that's like something we can all definitely relate to and I just loved the adventures they went on and the fact that their whole their friend groups like formed the squad together and I love books where that happens where like one friend group meets another friend group and then it just it's just one big friend group that's like my favorite thing just because I love the idea of like found family and found friends and stuff like that so definitely enjoyed this and definitely loved how funny it was and I'm definitely looking forward to see what else uh, Casey McQuiston writes. The next book I have is On the Come Up by Andy Thomas. I cannot have a 2000 19 faves without talking about my queen. Um, I loved The Hate You Give and so I was definitely looking forward to reading this one as well. I will say I did love The Hate You Give more because I think I loved the message in that one more but I definitely liked this one a lot as well. It was very funny. I loved the diversity in this as well just and the the conversations that were had and just the characters in general, like I thought there there were so many different personalities that blended so well together and I definitely loved the way Andy Thomas wrote the story and her characters and yeah, just so so good. Definitely recommend this. I'm super excited to see what else she writes because she's my queen, so yeah. This one was not published in 2019 but I did read it for the first time this year, this year so definitely uh, <laughs> one of my like top favorites in regards to contemporary books that feature mental health. Um, that one is Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. I thought this one did such a good job in the portrayal of mental health, especially in the aspect of OCD and the fact that it's not going to look the same for everybody. It talks specifically about OCD, but also it could be applied to any other type of mental health as well. Like your mental health isn't going to look the same as someone else's. It's going to look different. It's going to have different symptoms sometimes. and like that's okay but I definitely loved that it explored that in this story and definitely enjoyed the writing and the characters. I also really enjoyed the portrayal of therapy in this story because I feel like the therapist was so like encouraging but at the same time she never tried to tell um, main character what to do or tell her like how she should live her life or how she should feel about her um, OCD or anything like that so definitely enjoyed that. Prince Charming by Rachel Hawkins. I adored the story so much. I read this during the summer and it was definitely a good choice. I loved how funny this was. I loved how engaging the story was and how like I just easily became attached to the characters. And again, it's like that, that friend group thing that happened in this as well that I love. So it's about a girl whose sister is marrying a prince. And so she has to go stay with them for the summer to basically learn how to be like the princess's sister. And there she kind of gets roped in to the shenanigans of the royal family, especially uh, the prince's younger siblings. And she kind of has to figure out like the fine line between being there for her sister but also staying true to herself. I just loved reading this and I, I definitely want to read the sequel to this as well eventually and then I would love to Rachel Hawkins to write a um, story from Sebastian's point of view because I feel like it would just be complete. Super happy I read this and definitely recommend. The last book on this, this list before I go on to my honorable mention is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. This was another kind of shock to me so I definitely love vampire stories. They're one of my favorites. Twilight was my favorite vampire academy. Definitely was in that phase in 2015 whatever that happened but I wasn't sure just because I'm also not a big big fan of historical fiction, let alone historical fantasy, and I just wasn't sure how good this was going to be, especially because of how hyped it was. But I read it and I loved it and I'm super excited for the sequel. And I know people say that uh, vampires don't show up, but they do. So when you read this, um, while this, while like she's getting sucked into this world there's also someone committing murders in the city and so as the story like progresses the murders kind of get closer and closer to Celine and you learn that the murderer is a vampire so definitely see them and you kind of get an idea of who the vampires are essentially and yeah it's just so much and I'm so excited for the sequel to know because this ending was killer and it's killing me not to know what happens next because it was intense so yeah, super excited, but uh, also I think there is a hint of like maybe 
possibly werewolves being a thing, so that would be cool to bring back the whole vampires versus werewolves thing, so... I'm just excited, but yeah, I'm gonna put this now down now and stop gushing. So my honorable mention for 2019 is You Be Mine by Aaron Han. I really did enjoy this story. Um, I loved it a lot. It just didn't make my top 10. Um, it's about a girl who is basically the she's the daughter of country like singer royalty. Like both her parents were huge country stars, but they were also like deep into drugs and had a very unhealthy marriage and so eventually they both passed away and of course nobody knows about like the dark seedy things they just all see these like superstars that died um and so she wants to basically make her own mark on the country music scene um and so she sat agrees to be the headliner for clay who is the like basically basic like hunter hayes of the world as they're on this tour they kind of connect and it's basically a story where they have to decide if like their relationship is gonna be healthy for them or if it's basically gonna make them crash and burn um i enjoyed this a lot especially in uh the musical aspect of the story like i loved hearing like you got to see the lyrics of their songs and you got to like I don't know just be immersed in that environment so it was really cool the tagline is kind of like uh if you liked Johnny Cash, Johnny and June Cash, or whatever her name is, his wife's name, I don't remember, um, you'll definitely like this story because it kind of gives off the same vibes, um, essentially, so, yeah, I'm, I'm ex really excited to see what else Erin Han writes because, uh, I really enjoyed her storytelling and her characters. Alright, so those are my top faves of 2019. I can't believe I'm making this video, but... Here we are. If you like the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments on any of the books I mentioned, please comment them down below. If you want to, please definitely comment one of your favorites of the 2019 year uh, down below as well. That would be really cool. I would love to see if I've read any of them or love to get recommendations of anything you think I should read um, this next coming year. And if you're not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji down below. I'm stealing the idea from my friend Sylvia from Wish Fulfillment. And if you want to keep seeing more videos of me, please subscribe down below. You're also welcome to follow me on any of my social medias. I have a Twitter and a Bookstagram. Um, and they're both linked down below. And I also have a Goodreads and you can, you can add me on that too if you want. Um, and if you want to keep uh, getting notified about when I post new videos, please also hit that bell button down below. And you are also Burrows and World Full of Weights. Bye.